Hey, what is going on guys and welcome to part 3 of Photoshop 101. And uh, the last time we were here, we actually uh, were going to do the lasso tool. Now the lasso tool has uh, three sides to it. There's a uh, normal lasso tool, there's the uh, polygonal lasso tool, and the magnetic lasso tool. And uh, you can press L to uh, select it. So the regular lasso tool, let me just make a new layer. I have it here selected and if I click and drag with my mouse, and just make a shape, I don't care what, so like this. And if I leave it, uh, it hits this point here. And you actually made uh, like this C, right? So I'm going to take my paint bucket tool, and if I click inside the shape, it's going to uh, fill the selection with color. Yeah, it makes a selection. Let's uh, see it like that. Um, right now I'm going to delete this, because we already know how this works. And I'm going to grab the uh, other tool, which is the polygonal lasso tool. And I'm just going to zoom in this building right now. And uh, the polygonal lasso tool is actually great for uh, selecting buildings because it's so precise. So, how do we use it? We click once in a corner and uh, we leave the mouse then. And we just drag along uh, this line. And I can click here, in this corner, this corner, this corner this corner and go all the way around the house it's like a pen tool but it's more unstable because you can misclick I could double click right now and it's going to make an ugly selection and if I try to undo it actually disappears so I suggest using the pen tool if you're trying to uh, cut out a house so um, yeah it's just a, a lasso tool but it has more precise handling so I can just make a a polygon right now in a shape fill it with color and as you can see it made uh, this shape but uh, yeah it's a very useful and a quick tool for uh, rendering small things maybe and uh, doing uh, polygonal shapes I don't know if you're doing a, a piece of art which involves uh, Picasso like uh, stuff I don't know <laughs> do you guys do uh, whatever you want and the next tool that we have is uh, the uh, magnetic lasso tool and uh, this is like an, an improved version of uh, the lasso tool like I don't know what the lasso tool is, tool is doing here with uh, this uh, little guy here so if I go on the house right now oops I just misclicked uh, if I click on this point right here and I just uh, go up 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 with this tool I can actually add points like I would do with a normal pen tool this is actually a more precise uh, lasso tool. As you can see, if, even if I am facing up, I'm trying to go up above the building, it uh, it leaves like a curve behind, so it covers all the pixels. So I just click around, you know, add points, and I can select. Uh, it's kind of a sloppy selection right now, but uh, I'm just making a point here that it's better than uh, the lasso tool. Looks kind of funny. But uh, yeah, you can also do shapes with this. You can uh, go around and uh, render stuff. And uh, obviously you can fill it to make uh, retarded shapes, which is awesome. <laughs> and um, next we have the uh, quick selection tool. And you can press W on the keyboard to uh, select it. <laughs> so uh, what does this do? It actually is a, um, a good... Uh, tool to select for example the sky in the background uh, in this picture for example so I'm just going to grab a, a bigger size you can actually change it like you would change the size of a brush and I am actually going to go over the sky and check that out it automatically just selected this area that I exactly wanted it to select so I can delete it later now I can press delete let me just uh, rasterize this layer I double clicked it um, and I can actually delete the sky but as you can see here we have uh, also selected this uh, house tip so how do we go how are we going to fix that we're going to click on the minus here and uh, now we're going to select a smaller brush size and we're just going to click around until until all the tips are uh, off of uh, the house so we only have the sky selected uh, this works better with the uh, magic wand tool. I'm going to show that in a second. Let me just uh, deselect this like that. And uh, yeah, 
yeah, it, it works. It works sometimes, most of the time. I would still suggest using the pen tool because it's much, much better than all of these tools. Okay, let's see. I can delete and uh, yeah, it, it did the job sometimes, sort of. <laughs> I don't know. Is that a pigeon? Yeah, it's a pigeon. Okay. <laughs> um, anyway, let's pass on to the magic wand tool, which is a awesome, awesome tool for a quick selection. So I'm just going to click on my um, sky here and check that out. It automatically selected just the sky, just this color that I wanted. And um, you can actually add uh, more selections so you don't actually just uh, select uh, one thing at a time like it does here. So I can uh, click here. And I think it's, uh, is it this? Yeah, add to selection. This uh, two squares here. And it's going to add more selections as you click, like so. So right now I have three parts of this uh, uh, picture selected. I'm going to click delete and check that out. It deleted uh, everything, uh, the sky in the background. I can actually make more selections here and delete uh, the sky in the background there. So we can just have, you know, like the house with the wires. Maybe we're going to add a uh, HDRI sky or something. I don't know. Uh, fun stuff. <laughs> but yeah, the tool works. It's uh, fantastic. You guys should try it. Let me choose the average here to uh, point sample. Uh, this, these don't actually matter that much. They uh, just select a bigger area and uh, stuff like that. And uh, the tolerance is very important though. Like if I put the tolerance to uh, 120, it's going to <laughs> be horrible. It's going to select... Uh, much more uh, a bigger area and I'm just going to leave it at the, the default 32 and uh, anti-alias here so it doesn't actually create more uh, artifacts when selecting uh, sky and such so uh, the next tool that we have is the uh, crop tool and I love I love this tool I love this tool I can just simply go uh, and click on it and uh, instead of going to image and then uh, image size or I don't know, canvas size. I can just resize the picture uh, how I want. So I'm just going to click here and drag, click here and drag, click here and drag. And I am, I just made a bigger canvas. I want my picture on a bigger canvas. I just made it. I'm, I pressed enter right now, by the way, uh, to apply the settings. This is an awesome tool. Make sure to use it instead of uh, going to image and then image size. Uh, if you just need just a little bit more space and you don't want to ruin, to ruin the uh, image. Uh, next we have this uh, perspective crop tool and this is a awesome, awesome, awesome tool. And this is actually going to put anything, any area that you select in perspective, a frontal uh, type of uh, the image. Let's, let's do a very uh, drastic example. So I'm going to select an area, right, with the this uh, tool and I'm going to just move it here and I'm going to drag this corner here at the house I'm going to drag drag this corner in the, this corner of the house this one's going to be right here on top and this is going to be right here and now if I press enter check that out we got a frontal of the house we got a frontal we changed the perspective here it's like a leaning to the left and here we got a frontal and uh, it works more or less. Uh, yeah, there are some uh, stuff that can be fixed uh, with uh, the warp tool, and uh, we're going to go that to go to go to that tool um, in the future lessons. But yeah, making this kind of thing in uh, such a short time, like I mean, look at this. I just select this uh, part of the house. I press enter, and we got a frontal of it. How cool is that? Um, and next we have. The slice tool. Now the slice tool is very cool for web design. I uh, don't really want to cover it because we are going, you know, towards a more artistic uh, kind of Photoshop tutorials. But uh, yeah, let me just show you how what it does. So it does exactly what it says. It slices up pictures. So imagine this is a website. This image is a website. The selection here is the uh, banner. Here, for example, we have the um, I don't know sidebar if it's a blog and uh, right now I'm selecting the content and uh, this is going to be our content where uh, all the text is going to be so banner sidebar content and this middle section here is going to be the menu 
if I actually double click on this this uh, tiny image here, uh, it's going to uh, save this selection as um, as an image, and you can actually add any, a URL to it, a target message text, and uh, tags. Uh, so yeah, this is this is more for web design. You know, I, I, if you want to, I'll make a uh, in depth tutorial, but I don't really want to cover it. You know, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Um, but yeah, if you want me to make a more in-depth tutorial, then uh, just uh, tell me. And uh, yeah, this slice select tool, I don't, uh, yeah, don't want to go there. Yeah, as I said, if you want it, then just request it in uh, the description because it's not really important for our artistic mind. Let's call it like that. Okay, so those were uh, the three tools for today. I'm not going to keep you any longer. Um, a question that I would like to answer, which is uh, asked to me a lot, is uh, is it worth it to switch from Photoshop CS5 or earlier to uh, CS6? I would answer with probably not. If you're using Photoshop CS1 to CS4, I would recommend switching to CS5, but the CS6, I don't know, I mean, there are some tools, yeah, that make your life easier, like uh, the various blur tools and perspectives and stuff like that, but, you know, there are quite a few bugs right now that uh, are really annoying, and it's, I don't know, it's not really recommended. I would wait until Adobe releases uh, a couple of updates for Photoshop CS6, uh, and then, yes, if it fixes the current bugs that it has, then yes, go and switch to Photoshop CS6 immediately. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, uh, I will see you guys in the, the next few days. I'm going to make another tutorial, as always, and uh, have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful weekend. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking my videos. 6,000 subscribers, guys, already. <laughs> That's... Whoa. <laughs> This is going fast. This is a bit overwhelming. <laughs> uh, thank you guys, honestly. I will uh, keep making tutorials and um, hopefully you guys will like them. Cheers.